Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna be prepping to do some upcoming mulching. So within the next week or so, I'm gonna get some mulch and uh, re-mulch uh, out here on my uh, 0.19 acre lot here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, the first time I mulched out here was two, close to two years ago, uh, not quite two years ago, and it took about 18 yards of mulch. A lot of plants have been put into this landscape if you've been following along since then, and it should take less than half that, and uh, even less than that moving forward. Got a lot of ground covers, got a lot of spreading shrubs, so hopefully over time, you know, less and less each time I apply it. I like to apply it uh, this time of year in February, early March, um, because it does put a cap on the soil and hopefully prevents lots and lots of those spring weeds that would be germinating uh, from, from being able to come up. It doesn't stop everything. Weeding is something you're going to have to do if you're going to be a gardener, but uh, I can prevent lots and lots of them uh, this way, but it does require some cleanup. I have all my leaves um, have been left in place. They're already starting to break down and uh, they are part of the mulch. And so not worried about them. I will go through and I'll show you in the backyard I have some places where the leaves are a little deeper around plants and I probably will thin them out a bit around a plant here or there before, before I mulch, but they're just going to be mulched over and become part of the thing that's feeding my plants this year. It's been a rougher winter than we've had and really not so much in the low temperatures. Our low temperatures haven't been that abnormal, but we were so warm in November and December that it led us into a situation where things have gotten stung a little more because they just weren't asleep. Uh, before we got real, you know, real winter. So uh, things like my snapdragons, which this time last year looked absolutely fantastic, are a little bit rough looking. They'll come back out of it as soon as it warms up. These will be beautiful in the entryway to the, uh, to the front. I call this a gate. It's not, there's no gate there. It's just opening in the fence uh, that I built. This fence, and I'll, I get questions in every video about this fence, uh, was in a video last year if you want to see how I uh, built this little low fence out here. And it's not so much a fence as it is just a place where I can have a garden on this side and a garden on that side and create a bit of a little room out here by the street. So prep wise, I do have some bulbs coming up and uh, when I mulch, I'm gonna have to be super careful of something like that. Uh, uh, you know, there'll be just a little bit of thin layer applied by hand uh, to that space. Um, those are things to be looking for, you know, when you are mulching this time of year. You know, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt the bulbs that I have coming up. So it'll be super thin over the bulbs. Anywhere else will be a bit thicker. I've got, uh, here's an aster. This was a fall blooming aster. It's um, died back long ago and it's time to uh, get it cleaned up. It's already got the new foliage coming uh, at the base of it. And so what I'm going to do on this is just get this cut back. I'm going to throw all this stuff out in the road for now. So. I'll come back and clean it up later. Anything you see me cutting back in this yard now is either gonna, if it's heavy, it's gonna go through a chipper. And if it's something this small, it's just gonna go right on a compost bin. You'll see all that this spring. Um, I'm building a back fence back there and I'm gonna have two compost bins and you'll see how I'm using all this material that you've seen in the pruning videos this spring. But any of my perennials at this point from last year, they're ready to be cleaned up. Uh, get this soil. Uh, cleaned off. There's cone flowers and uh, all kinds of things out here uh, that have finally died back uh, after again what was a very mild uh, fall. There's verbena banariensis. Uh, all of this stuff, all of this material again will be reused. So I don't care if there's little tiny sticks in the bed, you know, something like this. Don't worry about anything like that. Just let it lay there. Mulch will go right over top of it. And uh, again, it'll break down and become, come feed for your plants this year. The next thing I wanna do is along any hard surfaces like this, um, I actually need this, from this curb, this actually gains about eight inches. You won't be able to see that on the camera. You never can tell how something climbs like that. This, this, this lot is very, very flat, but there are a couple places where you know, it jumps up pretty quick. I need to put some sort of edge along the back of this concrete, and I'll do that this year. It might be a stone up on its side, so it's a little more decorative, but to keep this mulch from continually sliding out um, on my curb. For now, uh, the way that I deal with it 
is I'll just take my shovel and I'll, my little skinny trenching shovel, and I'll turn it sideways like this and I can actually roll that mulch back into that bed just like that. If it's heavy in some spot like that, it'll just go and get tossed up in there. But I'm basically just cleaning this curb off. And again, everything here is mulch. This is not, uh, you know, if it needs to be broken down in a compost bin, like some of this bigger stuff, that's where it'll go. If it's something small, it's just going in the bed, mulch is going over top of it, and it'll look great uh, when I get to that point. And then from here, after I, get, after I get the concrete cleaned off, I'll take my shovel on an angle like this, and I'll just drag it like this. The first time you do this, this might not be very easy. Uh, it may take more work than what I'm showing you, but this soil's all loose now, so um, it's a pretty easy job for me to roll this material up in the bed just a bit. Again, if I get too much of it, it can go right up in there. Mulch is gonna go right over top of it. But just like that, see that little trench I've created across here? This is what I'm gonna do against any hard surface, driveway, sidewalks, uh, and then the mulch can just lay right up against the back of my curb. Again, in this particular case, because this keeps happening, I know I have to put some sort of border in place a little bit higher uh, to prevent this, or I'd need to lower this bed some. I'm not doing that at this point, so um, it will gain some sort of edging this year. I put up two pruning videos recently, pruning some uh, material in the landscape. The things that you are going to prune uh, this winter, you might want to do before you start this job because those are, you know, um, it's going to make a mess. Those things have been cut, cleaned up. Now you've seen a cutting back perennials that have, are completely dormant, um, you know, getting those cut back and then edging along all the hard surfaces. Again, driveway, sidewalks, street. The next thing is I've got two small pieces of turf. Uh, one in the front, one in the back. Um, I've trench edged these before, and so you know this is this is really loose soil, you know, along the edge, and uh, super super easy uh, for me to do it. If it's new, it's a new space, uh, you may want to go rent a trench edger. Uh, it's something you can rent at any rental place. Don't know what you're talking about when you call them, but it's a uh, a gas machine that cuts a, a perfect little straight edge up against your turf, uh, and a, and it fans out into the bed. Uh, once you do it one time with a machine, it's pretty easy to go back and re-edge before, um, before you mulch each time. But this edging, this edged area just gives a place for that mulch to fall against your turf and create a really nice crispy, uh, crispy edge on it. Um, I can, I've done this long enough that I can just use my trenching shovel for this pretty quickly and make a pretty nice edge. Um, but a flat shovel like this is probably the best weapon for this if you're doing it by hand. Uh, it's got a perfectly flat edge. If you have uh, lots of trees uh, in, your, in your area, uh, sometimes it can be hard to trench edge just because of all the roots running through it. And you can get one of those root slayer shovels, which is it, pretty much exactly the same shovel, but it's got teeth in the bottom. I'll link one down below the video and you can purchase that. People I've recommended that to in consultations have thanked me later. Uh, if you do have roots, um, that root slayer shovel is, you know, I just don't have that problem. I've got, couple here or there, but for the most part, I'm not digging through roots here. Um, but the way I go about um, edging a space like this, uh, this starts out with a really flat line until about here, and then it starts to curve around right there. What I'll do is I'll start, I'll pick a spot uh, where I know I want the edge, and I'll kick it back in here. If you have spreading grasses, let me say this real quick. I have a spreading grass, this is zoysia. Uh, when I edge, I, I cut down like this and then I kick it up in the bed. I'm making sure though that I'm not going to kick a bunch of this zoysia grass up in the bed because it will come up and start spreading through uh, the, my bed areas back here. So as I'm doing this I might pick out a chunk here or there and actually throw it on the lawn 
uh, and then I'll come back and dispose of it later. But I'll pick a spot, start my trench there, and then come back maybe six or eight feet. And you know, after this has started to curve here, and pick another spot, and I'll cut down just like that, okay? Then I'll come right about the middle of those two places, and I'll do this again, okay? And this will make sense in just a minute. And kicking that over my pansy right there, okay? All right, then I'll split the difference between those two, just like this, okay? This shovel allows you to use your foot like I just did pretty easily, okay? All right, you can see if I come into here, got some leaves on the turf here. Um, if I come into the middle again of those two spots, okay, and you can really start to see that come together. Again, you can just keep going in the middle, especially the first time you do this. Okay, kick that off of there. In the middle, in the middle, just like that. And then I'll go through here and clean this up. And you can see, I'm, I promise you, if you'll do that technique, you will end up with really crispy edges, just like that, okay? You see how nice that is? If I'd have started here and just followed along here, at some point I'd have made some weird mistake and I'd have been out here somewhere um, and it wouldn't have ended up looking you know, that crispy. From there, I'll jump way out to another spot, about six, eight feet away, and then again, I'll come to the middle, the middle, the middle, and uh, we'll end up with a nice crispy edge all the way around the turf. I have all the hard surfaces edged, I've got the turf edged, the next thing I want to do, uh, again, I'm leaving these leaves in place. And so if I have them piled heavily around an individual shrub like this uh, Lakothawi here, I'll come through and thin, thin them out a bit. I'll just bring a rake over here and I'll come in here and, and take some of these out from under it. I don't want the plant in the, I'm going to put about two inches of mulch on top of these leaves. So if I leave these leaves piled under here and then I put two inches of mulch, I will have buried this plant quite a bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to come through here and, and spread the leaves out a little more evenly because the wind kind of blows them up under the plants. Uh, things like this hookarella, uh, I'm just going to clean completely around it. Okay, so you can see that I do not, I do not want to. Um, the leaves have been very beneficial to this plant. So think about this. You know, as it's been cold the last few weeks, they've been a perfect protection. Now I'm going to just pull them away, and I'm going to make the bed space look much neater. Uh, I've got. Um, I showed in a video. Uh, a couple weeks ago on pruning that I pruned back my old growth on my hellebores. All of this foliage actually looks great on this particular one, so I left it alone. Uh, I've got uh, lots of salvias that have died back. Again, just gauge how big these stems are as to whether or not the mulch will hide them or not. If you think they're too heavy, uh, pull them out, put them in a compost pile, chip them up, make them part of your mulch. Or if they're super thin, just lay them in the bed, the mulch will go right over top of them. And again, I have just tons of flowering things out here from this past year that I need to get cleaned up like this. If it's a lot of material like this, unlikely the mulch is gonna hide that. So, uh, you know, I'll pull that out on the path, come around and get it with my wheelbarrow. And there you go. So one last area, I've got these paths, these garden paths, which someday will be stoned. But for now, I just wanna use a different type of mulch on them to delineate them and uh, I'm gonna edge that now. So I think you can see that the uh, turf uh, is edged. I think you can see from the coloration on it. Hopefully the drone's not too washed out. The winter look out here, of course, is it's winter. Um, so there's not, not a lot of color going on. Excuse me, Griff. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually edge these paths that I have in place. Again, one day these are gonna be stone, uh, but for now, I am actually gonna get some wood chips and do these paths and wood chips just to delineate uh, that they're paths, that they're different than the, uh, than the rest of the area. Hopefully you can see this from the drone coming, coming to pass. I've done these before. So again, this is just easy, easy work, um, because they've been done before. If you do, um, uh, if you, uh, doing them the first time frequently will take, uh, 
it'll take a lot more effort and uh, renting a machine might might be helpful again if you have roots get that root slayer get that root slayer shovel I'm throwing this material into the center of the path which saves me throwing weed seeds up into my into my beds much easier to weed this path uh, than it is than it is my beds So hopefully you can see all that from the uh, drone overhead, how these paths are laid out. The things in the middle of this bed back here are going to get bigger this year and you won't be able to see the back path. So people will have to walk around and explore back there. I'm also about to gain three or four feet uh, with a fence project that's going on back there. This project um, will continue here in the next few days if you're following along with the channel as, and as well as the fence project in the back. Um, they're just going to go boom, boom here in the next week. Thanks for watching.